He is known for legitimizing racism through scientific race theory and racial demography. He is recognized for developing the theory of the Aryan master race. He is Arthur de Gobineau. In the annals of history, there have been individuals whose ideas and beliefs have shaped the course of nations. One such figure was Joseph Arthur de Gobineau, a French aristocrat whose controversial theories would go on to have a profound impact on the world. Gobineau, known for his contributions to scientific race theory and the concept of the Aryan master race, sought to legitimize racism in the name of social hierarchy. Born into privilege, Gobineau was not content with his aristocratic status alone. He believed that the superiority of the aristocrats lay not just in their social standing, but in their genetic makeup. According to his theory, the aristocrats possessed more Aryan traits due to their limited interbreeding with what he considered inferior races. In 1853, he penned a seminal work titled, An Essay on the Inequality of the Human Races, which laid out his beliefs and arguments. Gobineau's ideas found an audience across the Atlantic, particularly among white supremacists in America. Figures like Josiah C. Knott and Henry Holtz, staunch advocates of slavery, were quick to praise Gobineau's writings and even translated his book into English. However, it is important to note that these translations omitted parts of the original text that portrayed Americans as a racially mixed population. The impact of Gobineau's work extended far beyond the shores of America. In Germany, his ideas gave rise to a social movement known as Gobineism. Furthermore, his writings influenced prominent antisemites like Richard Wagner, Wagner's son-in-law Houston Stewart Chamberlain, and Romanian politician Professor C. Souza. Perhaps most chillingly, Gobineau's theories would later be embraced and distorted by the leaders of the Nazi party, who edited and republished his work to support their own agenda. Joseph Arthur de Gobineau, a man whose beliefs were both divisive and influential, left an indelible mark on the world. His theories on racial inequality and the concept of the Aryan master race continue to be studied and debated, serving as a stark reminder of the dangers of pseudoscientific racism. Arthur de Gobineau, born into an aristocratic family on July 14, the day the Bastille was captured, often reflected on the irony of his birthday. He believed it demonstrated how opposites could come together. As a young boy, Gobineau developed a deep love for the Middle Ages, seeing it as a time of chivalry and nobility. However, his upbringing was far from idyllic. Gobineau's father, Louis de Gobineau, was a staunch royalist and military officer. His mother, Anne-Louise Magdalene de Jersey, hailed from a non-noble family with origins in the French colony of Saint-Domingue. Gobineau harbored a fear that he may have black ancestors on his mother's side, which troubled him greatly. The turbulence of the French Revolution fueled Gobineau's resentment, leading him to write, My birthday is July 14, the date on which the Bastille was captured which goes to prove how opposites may come together. His romantic nature and longing for a bygone era of honor and heroism only intensified during his teenage years. Gobineau's father, dedicated to restoring the House of Bourbon, aided the escape of the royalist Polignac brothers. However, he faced imprisonment by Napoleon's secret police as a consequence. It was only after the Allies liberated Paris in 1814 that Louis de Gobineau was set free. The family later fled France during the Hundred Days and returned after Napoleon's final defeat. Life for the de Gobineau family was far from prosperous. Louis de Gobineau's position as a captain in the Royal Guard of King Louis XVIII offered little financial security. Gobineau's mother, Magdalene, abandoned her husband for her children's tutor, Charles de la Coindière, leading them on a nomadic journey across various regions. To support themselves, she resorted to fraud, which deeply embarrassed Gobineau. These tumultuous experiences left a lasting impact on Gobineau, who held firm to his traditional aristocratic and Catholic values. The dissolution of his parents' marriage, his mother's scandalous affair, her fraudulent acts, and a life marked by poverty and instability all contributed to his traumatic upbringing. Arthur de Gobineau spent the early part of his teenage years in the town of Inslichen, where his mother and her lover resided. It was during this time that he became fluent in German, immersing himself in the language and culture. Gobineau's father, a staunch supporter of the House of Bourbon, was forced to retire from the Royal Guard after the July Revolution of 1830 brought King Louis Philippe to power. As a legitimist committed to a Catholic France ruled by the Bourbons, young Gobineau saw the revolution as a disaster for his beloved country. In 1831, Gobineau's father took custody of him and his siblings, and they relocated to Loria in Brittany. However, Gobineau did not have a close relationship with his father, whom he found dull and uninspiring. Growing up in Loria, a city built with ambitions of becoming a dominant trading hub with Asia, Gobineau developed a sense of faded glory as those dreams went unrealized. India, which was once envisioned as part of the French Empire, became a British colony instead. During his youth, 
Gobineau developed a fascination with the Orient, the term used to describe the Middle East in 19th century Europe. He immersed himself in Oriental tales and expressed a desire to become an Orientalist. However, his dreams of studying at the prestigious St. Cyr Military School were dashed when he failed the entrance exams in 1835. Undeterred, Gobineau set off for Paris with only 50 francs in his pocket, determined to pursue a career as a writer. He found lodging with his uncle, Thibaut Joseph de Gobineau, a passionate legitimist who despised Louis Philippe. Embracing his elitist tendencies, Gobineau established a society of like-minded intellectuals called Les Celtis, which included the painter German John and the writer Maxime Ducamp. Arthur de Gobineau, a writer and journalist in the mid-19th century, faced numerous challenges in his career. Struggling to make ends meet, he wrote serialized fiction and contributed to various periodicals, including La Quotidienne and Revue de Paris. Despite his family's support for the House of Bourbon, Gobineau became disillusioned with the leadership of the legitimist movement, describing them as factious and inept. In a letter to his father, he expressed his despair, stating, we are lost and had better resign ourselves to the fact. Gobineau also criticized the corrupt nature of French society under the House of Orleans. He believed that money had become the principle of power and honor, dominating business, regulating the population, and even governing the society. He lamented the shift from the virtues of the ancient nobility, such as charity, courage, virtue, and intelligence, to the oppressive feudalism of money. Gobineau wrote, Money salves consciences, money is the criterion for judging the esteem due to men. Living in what he called the age of national mediocrity, Gobineau grew increasingly pessimistic about the future. He observed a society that lacked spirit and heart, with leaders feuding amongst themselves and the Catholic Church seemingly aligning with revolutionary forces. In a letter to his father, he expressed his despair, stating, How I despair of a society which is no longer anything, except in spirit, and which has no heart left. Despite his challenges, Gobineau found solace in his friendship with Alexis de Tocqueville, a renowned political thinker of the time. Tocqueville praised Gobineau for his wide knowledge, intelligence, and excellent manners. He even appointed Gobineau to a position in the Quai d'Orsay during his tenure as foreign minister. Gobineau's work gained recognition when his article on the Greek statesman Count Ioannis Kapodistrias was published in the prestigious journal Revue de Du Mons. Arthur de Gobineau's early writings and experiences shed light on his disillusionment with the political and social landscape of his time. His observations about the dominance of money and the decline of moral values still resonate today. They remind us of the importance of maintaining a society that values virtues beyond material wealth and power. Gobineau's story serves as a reminder to critically examine the state of our own society and strive for a more meaningful and compassionate world. Do you want to explore more philosophers? Who do you want to see featured next? Subscribe and leave a comment below to let me know. I'll see you in the next video.